supernatural is something that isn't supposed to happen, but it does happen. AM 1420. WBSM presents Spooky South Ghost with your hosts, Tim Weisberg and Matt Costa. All right. Good evening. Welcome to Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg here along with the silent assassin, Matt Costa, and science advisor, Matt Moniz. And we are here, finally to talk with you about the paranormal, as we are well, pretty much each and every Saturday night. Uh, we're in the middle of a run here of one show within a four-week period. So, you know, we're, we're, we, we're basically like the amount of times Moni shows up to his day job here, <laughs> like once every four weeks. So is that, is that kind of the plan that you have going there? It's like, you just got to come in, you know, they just got to get your thumbprint on the wall every once in a while to make sure that you're still an active employee, and then you can go off and conduct all your crazy experiments on your own. I wish that was the case. Actually, it's it's actually for their protection because most of the the procedures and the uh, you, you know the different approaches that you use, they probably would not be legal for you to do within the actual laboratory setting. You'd be surprised how much of what I take out of the laboratory I can apply to paranormal research. Oh, I'm sure, but I mean, how much of what you do We're outside the laboratory back. can you apply to pharmaceuticals? That's the <laughs> other question. <laughs> It's uh, and that that's what's great for him is because he doesn't have to do the show for the next two weeks. That's uh, that's two weeks of trial and error on some of the things that he creates in the lab. Yeah. So, all right. In all seriousness, though, folks, uh, this is our special, you know, beginning of the year program here tonight, and uh, we tried to do a few things, and it didn't really work out so well. I mean, our, our original plan was that we were going to talk to Larry Warren who is one of the primary witnesses in the Bentwaters Rundlesham Forest UFO case, of which last week was the 30th anniversary. Now, all the principals involved in this uh, were over in England for the past week in observance of the anniversary. Peter Robbins, our friend Peter Robbins, is over there. Uh, Larry, of course, lives there now. And uh, Burroughs and Pendleton, Pendleton and all, the, all these Hall. guys, yeah. they're all over there. So uh, we, we ran into a little bit of trouble trying to get a hold of everybody, but I got in touch with Larry, and we were supposed to connect with him here. Uh, problem being, it's 3.30 in the morning over there, and the guy's probably worn out from all the different events that they've had in observance of this anniversary. So uh, while it didn't work out tonight, and maybe it still will, I mean, I, I put the call out there for him to get back in touch with us at any point during the program. So if it works out, we'll go with it. And if it doesn't, well, we'll just have to have him another time. The important thing is that he is willing to come on the show and talk with us about what he saw that night in December of 1980 and for a couple of nights. Well, he he doesn't really do that many interviews anymore, so we're kind of lucky if he does you know, step up to the plate. Well, I think that we've been fortunate, too, that we've, uh, we've shown that we give this case its proper respect. Obviously, with you working on some of the case yourself and with Peter writing the book with Larry Left at Eastgate, you know, it, there's no way that uh, anybody can look at Spooky South Coast and say, well, you know, here's a show that's going to take this, you know, half-assed. We're not going to do a half-assed job talking about that case. Of any case that we could talk about, uh, that one we're going to make sure that we get uh, we get everything right that we can get right. So, Well, I mean, you're dealing with countless military personnel all talking about the same thing. You know, it, it's a case that really should be taken seriously. And if it's, if it's something that you want to research and find out more for yourself, we did do an episode of it in, uh, I believe it was 2006, uh, one of our earlier episodes. Uh, we had Peter on to discuss it uh, for the first time. And in that episode, we played the entire audio recording that Colonel Halt made of what was being witnessed, you know, live as they're seeing it. Uh, the reports coming back in, he recorded all of that. So if you go back and listen to that show, you can hear that entire audio clip, as well as some other eyewitness testimony that we sprinkled in, uh, pre-recorded eyewitness testimony we sprinkled in during the course of the show. And it's a good primer. It's a good way to get going into the case, but I highly suggest that you pick up Left at East Gate, which you can get online. And uh, Larry also has a website, leftateastgate.com. So... Again, bone up on it because we'll be talking about it a lot here in the future on Spooky South Coast. But now we're going to go with Plan B, which is what we were going to be talking about anyway as part of the program. We'll just expand it to the whole show. We're talking about predictions for 2011. Now, a lot of radio shows are doing this now. It's not just the paranormal shows anymore either. You know, the regular radio shows are, are you know, what we call the normal folks. They're 
doing the same thing. Like, let's take calls. Let's open up the phone lines and have people tell us what they think is going to happen in 2011. And certainly we can do that as well. Our phone lines are open for the entire program. 508-996-0500 is the local number. 1-877-996-1420. Uh, that's the toll-free number. You can also email us, Spooky Crew at SpookySouthCoast.com. We can get that right here in the studio. And if you go on SpookySouthCoast.com, you can click on the Spooky TV logo, and you can actually watch the live video cast of the show as it happens. And while you're doing that, you can jump into the chat room and talk with everybody in there. And we've got a, a lot of our regulars in there joining us. Happy New Year to everyone out there listening and watching. And uh, we've got some big, exciting things planned for Spooky TV this year. We're going to have, it's not just going to be our show on there. We're going to have a bunch of other shows on there uh, that our friends are going to produce. People who are tied into this show and have been, uh, you know, big supporters and friends of this program for now heading into our sixth year. So uh, it's, it's, we built quite a family and we're going to kind of turn the airwaves of Spooky TV over to that family so that, you know, during the week, people who want to get their Spooky South Coast fix, they can go and enjoy some of the other programs and uh, there'll be a lot more on that coming up in the next few weeks, but uh, for now, I I'm just going to throw it out there. It's going to be some pretty pretty cool stuff. Cool. And I know I'm going to be sitting at home watching it, and I'm going to be anxiously awaiting some of this programming because I want to see how the people that we have associated with the show can do when they're not part of the show. You know what I mean? It's almost like when they come on this, they're kind of stuck in our format. And okay. I love our format. I think it works for us. But I want to see them shine in their own way. I want to see them kind of do their own thing. And that's, that's what's going to be really interesting because then, you know, you've seen it happen. We've had people uh, – I'll kind of let a cat out of the bag here. Tiffany. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany Rice is going to be doing a program semi-regularly while she's going to do readings and talk. You know, just basically it will be the Tiffany show, whatever she wants to do. And it's a different format than when she comes in here and we're asking her questions and she's got to worry about that or when she's doing the reading straight up. You know, it's 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 you're going to see more of the person behind who it is that's normally on the show. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, if you're interested, if you're somebody that's uh, associated with the show or a fan of the show or somebody who's been involved with us uh, in different aspects and you're interested in doing something, hey, shoot us the idea, Spooky Crew. At SpookySouthCoast.com, there's a lot of hours in the week that we could fill. But Saturday nights from 10 to midnight, that's ours. <laughs> you can't have that. But uh, anything else is pretty much negotiable at this point. So, But we're talking about predictions here for 2011. We're going to talk about what we think is going to happen in the year. Matt Moniz, you can predict your political revolution that you've been predicting every year since Obama got in office. Uh, no. I, I, I've got my own predictions for sure. 2011, though. I think that Governments will still deny the existence of UFOs. I think Bigfoot will still only be seen by hikers and loggers. And I think ghosts will still be recorded on film and, you know, uh, videotape and audio tape, but you will still have the religious, blind minded people saying they don't exist. Um, and I think my accuracy will be equivalent, if not greater, than, you know, Sylvia Brown. <laughs> That's not that hard anymore. Hence my predictions. But, uh, yeah, well, I mean, obviously those those predictions, you're not really reaching too much there. Although it would be awesome if even just one of those things, you know, proved wrong. I would wrong. love to be yeah. proven wrong. But one eight seven seven nine nine six fourteen twenty. that's a toll-free number, which has actually come off the screen on Spooky TV, and I couldn't get, a, get it back up there. But it's on the front page of SpookySouthCoast.com, uh, one 877 Nine nine six fourteen twenty, and you can also uh, email us to spooky crew at spooky south coast dot com if you have a prediction. Don't you don't just have to w do it tonight either. You can email it to us at any point, uh, as long as you don't do it after it's already come true, because then you know it's no good. Then it's reporting. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I'm going to do a little something coming up in the next hour. We hear on like shows like Coast to Coast and a lot of these uh, news radio shows that they have what are called futurists. Now, futurists are not psychics. Futurists are not clairvoyants. Futurists are not uh, seers of the future. They are people who take and analyze trends, and they predict based on those trends what's going to happen. They're basically using a lot of empirical data. Like Michael Scallion? Exactly. And, and they're, they're basically making educated guesses as to what's going to happen. They're crunching the numbers. And it's not subjective. I mean, they have 
the da- I mean, there's some subjectivity to it, but they have data to back up why it is that they're making these predictions. Right. They're basing it on previous statistics. They can tell that from the statistics of the past with the current things of the going forward, they can predict within a certain degree that this should happen and that should happen. So the good thing about being a futurist is you automatically have, say, a little bit more credibility than if you come on the air and say that you're a, a psychic. Now, everybody that knows me knows I'm a psychic as a brick, but I think I have the potential to be the world's first paranormal futurist. So that is what I'm actually going to throw out there tonight. I'm going to be the world's first paranormal futurist, and I'm going to predict some trends in the paranormal field this year. And I'm going to get a little bit more specific than what Matt Moniz was saying (laughs) just a few minutes ago. And I'm going to talk about some things that I really think are going to happen in 2011 with the paranormal field. And I'm hoping that with these predictions, I can generate some interest from the the listeners out there to call in and share what they think of my predictions. So don't wait until, you know, 2012 to call me out on what I'm saying here. Call me out on it tonight. And the phone lines are going to be open the whole show. Again, 1-877-996-1420, 508-996-0500, and Spooky Crew at SpookySouthCoast.com. And we can see everything that's going on in the chat room. Well, maybe Matt, not Matt Costa, but I can see on my computer what's going on in Spooky TV's chat room. So don't be afraid to go in there and have the discussion in there as well. Let's see if I can just throw one out there, and we'll, we'll kind of get people thinking here. Uh, we got about seven minutes here until we have to take a break for the news. So uh, we'll, we'll start off the discussion with at least one of the ones that I have. And you can see, I tried to, to think of some of these before the show, and I stopped. Uh, after I'm two. impressed. <laughs> so I'm thinking that a lot of these are just going to kind of come to me. You know, I don't want to spend too much time thinking about them. I want to take what I know about the data and make inferences from that data. I'm afraid that if I write them all down and I put too much thought into them, I might shy away from what it is that I was originally going to say. So with the live mic in front of me, I can be a little bit more ludicrous, which (laughs) uh, I usually don't have a problem doing. So, but here is one that I'm going to throw out there to start off the discussion. At least one paranormal television show on a major network will go off the air after the first season of 2011. There'll be at least one show that that'll be it. It'll, they'll have their whatever their first season is, 2011, and then it'll go down the drain after that. Canceled. Now, for whatever reason, that I, I don't know. But I know that one of these shows isn't going to be on the air anymore. Uh, and I, I, I'd say it'll probably happen by the summer because most of them will have at least one season uh, before the summer months. Uh, so no new series of any significance will debut which anybody out there that's working on a pilot right now or a program that might be bad news for you but i i I get a feeling that there won't be any more major paranormal shows that debut as regular weekly series on a broadcast network however i do see there being an increase in one-time paranormal specials so while they won't be these regular series out there debuting you know there won't be a new ghost hunters academy international there will be uh more shows that are kind of one-off one-time things which would actually benefit the paranormal field i feel more than trying to sustain a weekly show Uh, when you're putting some of these groups into a situation where they've got to go on every week and do an investigation and every week they've got to either generate evidence or debunk something uh, you know, you're, you're kind of putting a lot of pressure on these groups, especially when you consider there's, what, four or five major shows right now that are out there doing the same thing. So you're going to get a lot of overlap, especially where they've gone away from the private location. Everybody wants to go somewhere famous now. There's, there's a lot of overlap. So these specials will allow more investigation of the paranormal and less production of a television show. So let's go to the phones here. Uh, good evening. You are on the air first on Spooky South Coast. Happy 2011 to you. Happy 2011, Tim. How you doing? It's Dave from Upton. How's it going? Hey, we're doing very well. Awesome. And, uh, yep, I was one of the guys that was typing that stuff up in the chat room asking the same <laughs> questions about what you were just kind of talking about. Um, I, th- I think one of them already did fold, right? Um, which one? 
Uh, I don't pay attention. Actually, I, I, I could say actually, yeah, uh, uh, Ghost Lab wasn't it? Weren't they the, the first ones that kind of? So they're out. It's about it's, uh, pretty much what I've been seeing and hearing. All right, good. I'm I'm one for one so far. I yeah, mean, not I, good. I mean, I'm not glad that they're gone, but I mean, it's no, no, no. I'm not glad that they're gone either. Um, I had a chance to kind of work with those guys last year on a case that they were doing up this way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was, at first I was really kind of excited because they were asking a lot of questions and kind of really getting in-depth with the stuff. And then when you get a chance and you get invited over to see how things were going, <laughs> it was just a totally different story. It was, you know, I, I, I really hope that the, the way you're predicting things, that we go to the one-shot shows. There was that one show, uh, Paranormal America, where they did a special from, uh, I think it was Eastern State Penitentiary. Where they had all the scientists come in and everything, mm -hmm. and I, I haven't seen it again since. I was hoping it was actually going to be a show. Um, they, they basically kind of debunked a lot of stuff, but also threw a lot of possibilities out there in other, way, in other ways for paranormal investigators to look at things. Well, if, if I'm right, too, what was interesting about that show is wasn't that on, it was either on like the, uh, the Science Channel or it was on one of those channels, right? It wasn't like an A&E yeah. &E type of thing. It was, it was on one of the hardcore science channels and yeah i think discovery hit it once and then it went over to to like science channel it was on a couple of times yeah they're, it, they're all owned up and on, so. yeah but i mean uh, yeah i mean i like that idea of being able to to have those shows because you can get a different unique approach each episode i mean each each special will have a different take on it yeah yeah and you, you lose a lot and i i almost hate to say the acting <laughs> Has gone down the tubes. I mean, the, the first couple of seasons of Ghost Hunters are really great, and then you start to get all these other shows. And you know, they, what we really need to come up with is some sort of an acting uh, award system for them, <laughs> to, so we can start giving people at least some recognition for the work that they're doing in the well, paranormal when they're doing these types of shows. I think one of the one of the faults of these shows is. When you look at what, what goes on in them, they kind of start looking over their shoulder a little bit when a new show debuts. And I'm not saying that I know this for sure, but I think that you know, one show sees another show coming up, and that show is popular. So they're looking over their shoulder, and they're like, okay, maybe we need to start incorporating a little bit of what those guys are doing to what we are doing. And, and basically, you're diluting your original approach to your show to try to please everybody. Exactly. And what I heard yesterday... Um the Everyday Paranormal group, they put that mutiny thing out there, uh, the 1111, whatever it is. And it, it sounded like a lot of sour grapes. They kind of attacked the rest of the shows that have already been out there, and they were the ones that came along afterwards. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off there because we're coming up on the news break, but we'll, we'll get into this an hour or two, so feel free to call back uh, because we have somebody here in the studio who, who has been following along a little bit more than we have, and he can help us uh, sort through some of this. And, and, Dave, you're welcome to call back in as well. So, And everybody no else, um, you got no problem with that? No, no problem. Happy New Year, guys. Beautiful. Uh, at, at, least, at least Dave answers the phone. <laughs> Take hey, that, Larry. Hey, to get a chance to call us on, they're all asleep. <laughs> all right, well, stay tuned. We'll be right back uh, after the news, and we'll get more into this, some of the paranormal futurist predictions for 2011, and uh, we'll figure out what's going on with this mutiny as well. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more here on Spooky South Coast. First, with local news, talk, and sports, this is WBSM New Bedford, Citadel Broadcasting, AM 1420, WBSM. From ABC News, I'm Chuck Sievertson. Tornadoes on New Year's Eve have killed seven people across Missouri and Arkansas and leave hundreds homeless. Scott Schmidt of Sunset Hills, Missouri, hid in his basement when a twister came through. He says he got there just in time. Probably five seconds after I got to the basement, the snapping, cracking, roof started coming off. It was a powerful F3 tornado that dropped from the sky and slammed into this neighborhood. But because they'd had plenty of warning, tornado sirens had sounded for nearly half an hour. No one here was seriously hurt. ABC's Aaron Hayes at Sunset Hills, Missouri. Hundreds of homes were damaged or destroyed, according to reports in Arkansas, Missouri, and Mississippi. Canada says it'll slap larger and enhanced health warning labels on cigarette packs. The new labels will cover about three-fourths of the front and back of the packs. That's up from one-half. Many Hotmail users report to Microsoft that they have started the new year in distress. The complaints came fast and furious on Microsoft's online forum on Saturday morning that some Hotmail accounts lost emails and folders. 
One user wrote, please help me get them back. All my kids' info and pictures are in there. Others complained that the majority of the email in their inboxes was sent to their deleted mail folders instead. It's unclear how widespread the problem is. Microsoft is apologizing and says engineers are working on the problem. The free web-based email service has about 360 million users globally. Todd Ant, ABC News. An historic moment in New Mexico. I, Susana Martinez, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Susana Martinez sworn in as the state's first female Hispanic governor. This as many new or re-elected governors are scaling back inaugural ceremonies, considering multi-billion dollar state budget deficits. Texas Governor Rick Perry is ditching his black tie affair and holding a free barbecue. Minnesota Governor-elect Mark Dayton is encouraging blue jeans at his inaugural ball. You're listening to ABC News. Does your roof need replacing, your house need cleaning, or maybe you're ready to update your kitchen? Big or small, whatever your home improvement need, now it's easy to find the right home pro for your project. Log on to home.servicemagic.com. Service Magic is a free online resource with instant access to pre-screened remodelers, maids, handyman, roofers, and many other home contractors. Just go to home.servicemagic.com. Service Magic has a network of licensed and insured contractors in hundreds of home improvement categories. If you need a painter, electrician, plumber, or any other home service, visit home.servicemagic.com. It's easy and it's free, and it's the source to find neighbor-recommended contractors in your area. Now you can hire a pre-screened home pro with confidence. Go to home.servicemagic.com. It's quick, it's free, and there's no obligation. Go to home.servicemagic.com. That's home.servicemagic.com. Word now, what caused an airliner to stray into restricted airspace earlier today in Washington, D.C., which led to fighter jets scrambling and a brief evacuation of the Capitol building. Federal officials say the pilot accidentally turned his radio to the wrong frequency, causing the plane to lose radio contact. ABC's Timon Bradley in Washington. There are typically not that many people actually working in the U.S. Capitol on a day like today, a Saturday and a holiday But the people who were in the buildings were evacuated just as a precaution. The president and vice president are away on vacation. The U.S. Air Express flight was headed from South Carolina to Washington. A manhunt's underway in Maryland. Police looking for someone who killed a 40-year-old man, an employee at a Bethesda hospital today. Montgomery County police say after a four-hour lockdown, they consider the hospital safe now. More time to fish due to climate change, according to ABC's Joan Bennett. New Year's Day kicks off the start of Maine's ice fishing season when fishermen try to catch whatever's lurking beneath the ice. Though early in the season, rangers warn the ice may not be totally safe, especially for the elaborate shacks that ice fishermen construct to stay warm. For the first time, the state is also allowing fishermen to cast their lines into open waters of lakes, ponds, and streams during winter months. Regulations were changed as wildlife officials noted the ice forming later in the season and melting earlier. Joan Bennett, ABC News. This is ABC News. Are you struggling with too much credit card debt, sky-high interest rates, having trouble just making the monthly minimums? We're Credit Card Relief. We've helped thousands of people become debt-free in months instead of years, all while saving thousands of dollars. The consultation is free and the relief is real. Call Credit Card Relief, 866-333-9191. That's 866-333-9191. Not available in all states. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News. When I broke my neck in a diving accident over 40 years ago, people would approach my bedside in different ways. Hi, this is John Erickson Tata, and some of my friends had a lot of good advice, but good as it was, their counsel went right over my head because I was too emotionally turned upside down to make heads or tails out of their well-meaning words. I'm sure the advice made great sense to them, and no doubt they were anxious to see a smile on my face or want to see a happier attitude from me, but I was not ready for advice. I was still mourning, I was still grieving the loss of not having use of my hands or legs. I needed time to cry, time to think. And oh, how I appreciated those friends who did not come into my hospital to fix anything or fix me. Often they did not have any words to say. They just came to spend time with me, they cared. And from disabilitycampaign.org, let me say that you can care too.
All About Cars with Ralph Medeiros, every Saturday from 10 till noon on AM 1420 WBSM. AM 1420, where help is just a phone call away when you have questions about your car. All About Cars with Ralph Medeiros of Ralph's Auto Center is on every Saturday morning from 10 till noon. What to buy, how to fix what you've got, the latest news and recalls. All About Cars with Ralph Medeiros every Saturday morning at 10 on AM 1420 WPSF. AM 1420, WBSM, with Total Body Wellness, every Wednesday morning at 825 on The Pete Braley Show. Join Rainy St. Laurent of Pharma Health as he covers a wide variety of topics designed to make you feel better. How to handle the side effects of certain vaccines, how to reduce the risk of breast and prostate cancer, how to sleep better, the benefits of vitamin D, and many more topics. Your host is a registered pharmacist, a board-certified clinical nutritionist, as well as a doctor of natural medicines. Total Body Wellness, Wednesday morning at 825, presented by Pharma Health on AM 1420 WBSM. I didn't need help from anybody. I was good at everything. And this, the drugs and the alcohol, I couldn't stop doing it. I went down a path of destruction, just about escaping the feelings. I never used one without the other. It was chaos, a dump trucks, insanity plowed into us. I know it was the devil. I actually got suspended from baseball. I said, I need help, and I can't do it anymore. I fell on my own. You do with me what you want to do with me, but I surrender. Watch Josh Hamilton's film at IamSecond.com. We sat the girls down, and Jeff said, Mom and I are getting remarried. Brittany just buckled at the knees and started crying. And Lauren's going, is it for real? Is it for real? During that whole time, they have been praying that God would work a miracle and just put our family back together. I just closed my eyes and I was like, Lord, <laughs> you've done something huge. Miracles still happen. I am second.com. AM 1420, WBSM, where every Friday morning, the Pete Braley Show buys you dinner at the Mattapoisa Chowder House. To win, simply become a WBSM Facebook fan. It's easy. Just log on to WBSM.com and enter the keyword Facebook. Every Friday morning at 820, Pete and Neil read the name of a Facebook fan. When you hear yours, call back and win. Become a WBSM Facebook fan and win with the Mattapoisa Chatter House and AM 1420 WPSM. Hi, this is Scott Lang, Mayor of the City of New Bedford. Have you checked your medicine cabinet lately? You should. Every day, more than 2,500 teenagers abuse prescription medication for the first time. Sadly, teens often experiment with medications they find right at home. Many young people think it's safer to misuse prescription medications than illegal street drugs, but that simply is not true. Prescription medications can be beneficial when used under a doctor's supervision, but misusing medications can lead to addiction, overdose, and even death. Fortunately, there are steps you can take to help protect your children. Keep track of your medications. Encourage friends and relatives to safeguard medications in their homes. And consult your pharmacist about disposing of medications you no longer need. Remember, prescription drug abuse is still drug abuse. If you don't want your children to abuse prescription medications, don't give them the opportunity. A community service of New Bedford, a partnership for a drug-free America and the U.S. Conference of Mayors. To learn more, go to drugfree.org. For America's wounded warriors, sometimes coming home can be a battle in itself. Every one of them needs our support to meet the challenges they face every day. The USO provides Americans a way to offer that support to our wounded warriors and their families. Join us. Visit USO.org to learn how you can make a difference in their lives. The USO. Until everyone comes home. Like it's all on my shoulders. How am I going to take care of my parents if they develop an eye disease like glaucoma? Glaucoma is the leading cause of blindness in African Americans and Hispanics in the United States. And what about my kids? Will they inherit it? Not to mention my risk factors. 
I'm really concerned and I need some answers. Call 1-800-437-2423 or go to ahaf.org for answers, including a free brochure on glaucoma. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. believed that everyone had a role to play in achieving social justice and building a better America. In fact, he once said, life's most urgent and persistent question is, what are you doing for others? I mentor a child. I collect food for the homeless. I volunteer at my school. I take my neighbor to her doctor's appointment. I clean up my neighborhood. I help kids stay in school. What are you doing for others? Answer Dr. King's call. On the King holiday, honor Dr. King and make America better by volunteering. Thousands of projects all across America need your help. Go to mlkday.gov today and get involved. That's mlkday.gov. Because as Dr. King said, Everybody can be great. Because everybody can say, You only need a heart full of grace. Hi, I'm Brett Michaels for the American Diabetes Association. Diabetes is a constant battle. I know, I've had it since I was six years old. A lot of people don't consider it deadly, but diabetes kills more Americans each year than breast cancer and AIDS combined. Please join me in the movement to stop diabetes. Help us raise awareness and find a cure. Share, act, learn, and give at StopDiabetes.com. chairs get up and look in a mirror we're not meant to experience the world through a machine this is the point i'm talking about my life i can't seem to get that through to you i'm not just talking about one person i'm talking about everybody i'm talking about form i'm talking about content i'm talking about interrelationships i'm talking about god the devil hell heaven do you understand finally spooky south coast is back <laughs> Welcome back. Hour number two of Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg here, along with the silent assassin, Matt Costa, and science advisor, Matt Moniz. And we also have uh, John Brightman of New England Paranormal Research is here with us in the studio as well. And uh, you can check out his site, neparanormalresearch.com, uh, to find out more about the group and some of the events that they put on here in the area, including bringing people into the Freetown State Forest. So if you dare, you can sign up for one of John's trips out there, probably for a few months before you have another one is that uh yeah, yeah it's a little cold out right now so uh, we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> try and hold off until uh maybe around june there you go we and we'll be sure to send you out into the field well before that for some sort of uh, investigation show just so uh you don't get to wait for the warm weather definitely but uh we're, we're we've got things flu very fluid here tonight uh, we're working on a few things so we might have uh something going down a little bit later on in the show but for right now we're talking about uh I'm trying to be the world's first paranormal futurist, making predictions of what I think is going to happen in the paranormal world in 2011. And I touched off uh, at the beginning with the idea that at least one paranormal television show is uh, going to be canceled. It's going to be cut from uh, the, from its network this year. And already I find out, and I didn't know this before we came on the air, I swear, that uh, there's now three shows that have bit the dust at, at the very least. Uh, so it's, it's Ghost Lab is done. Uh, I guess Most Haunted is done. Um, what was the other one? There was another one that people were saying was, was off now. Uh, there's a, a Paranormal State spinoff that's gone. Paranormal Cops is gone. I mean, this is, this is what I'm talking about. There was too much of this programming, and the audience for it, unfortunately, is becoming more streamlined, more limited. It's not the big thing that it was three, four, five years ago, which... That's just going to happen, folks. I mean, I know that if you like this stuff and you like being able to watch uh, a different paranormal program every night, 
it's great while it lasted, but it's 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 never going to last. I mean, it, look at the trends that you see in other parts of television. You know, uh, when when scripted television was uh, when the writers were on strike, you had all these reality shows that were popping up. You had all these game shows that were popping up, and then when the scripted TV comes back, it fades into obscurity again. It, it goes back to maybe one or two nights a week they have this type of programming because television is dominated by scripted dramatic or comedy programs it's just how it always is and reality show i feel stupid even using that term anymore reality show because there's nothing reality to the only the only reality involved in it is the reality that slaps them across the face when they don't have a show anymore and i'm not talking about people in the paranormal show i'm talking about uh, people who do this uh in general and i I don't want to talk bad about anybody that either we know or that we don't know, especially people that we don't know. But I, I just want to say you see a lot of this within the paranormal and within other aspects of reality television. Their show gets canceled. They get fired from a show. They're no longer associated with a show. And basically, if you look in the grand scheme of things, what we call your 15 minutes is essentially up. But because of the different ways that people can introduce media uh the way i mean we're guilty of it we stream on the internet we uh podcast on the internet because you can reach people in so many different ways now you can keep extending that 15 minutes when that door starts closing on you you can stick your finger in it and keep it from closing all the way just a little bit longer and it's all how much of that pain you can take as that door is trying to push shut against your hand that determines how long you stay in the game and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing people that can't let it go and find new ways to keep themselves going. And again, I'm not pointing to any specific the fingers. The Octomom syndrome. That type of thing. That's, I'm not, I, I mean, I know what people are going to say. They're going to say, well, you're talking about, for example, the everyday paranormal people. They don't have Ghost Lab anymore. Now they're launching this thing through their site. Or they'll say a Brian Harnwa, who you know is no longer associated with the television program, so now he's got his own venture. You know, Shannon Sylvia starting Power Rock TV. These are all different outlets and avenues for these people to continue what they're doing. I'm not saying they're trying to force those doors open. If they were trying to force the doors open, you'd be seeing Brian Harnwa trying to compete on Survivor. You know, that's what I'm talking about. It's the fact that you're going from one thing to another. Um, what's his name? Rob Mariano. The, the guy that was on Survivor, he keeps popping up on other reality programming. That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about people who are taking their knowledge and trying to continue it in a new medium. They're just changing a venue. Exactly. And just because they're no longer associated with a TV show, you might find that you're going to get better out of them. For example, how many people out there listening to the show right now would watch an episode of Ghost Hunters and see Brian? And I can pick on Brian a little bit because we know him and we love him. Oh, yeah. But they, you know, how many people watched that portrayal of him on television and came away with an opinion of who he was based on that, that they wouldn't have thought that at all if they actually knew him and they knew him like we do. I mean, this is you're talking about a guy that's you know crashed on my couch. Yeah. You know, for, and if, you know, if, you, you've, if you've seeing him on TV is a lot different than meeting the man in person. And I'm just picking him because I know he's a polarizing figure to a lot of people and he would admit that he had some drama going on this week yeah. and you know that's what happens though you 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 become you're a television character to people and they can't separate the real person from that television character so what you're seeing now is you're seeing him in a different format where you know basically his role on ghost hunters was he's going to get picked on by jason grant and steve i mean That might not have been the original intention of what happened, but that's how it played out. And when that got a positive response, that's how they kept editing the program. So that's what you're going to see. And so now when he relaunches his show with his wife, Michelle, next week, I think next week, when they bring that back, you're going to get to see the other side of him. The guy who's been doing this for a very long time and has put in a lot of research hours and, you know, a little plug to them because, you know, they deserve it for their hard work. Uh, what's it? Wicked Airwaves? Is that the name of it? Something, Something like that. Yeah. Uh, I should know this if I'm going to promote it. But uh, but that's just what I'm saying. It's a chance for somebody to uh, maybe, like we're talking about with Spooky TV. You know, you're not limited by the original format. Now you can kind of be yourself and expand. So that is a good thing in my eyes. Uh, the bad thing is when people keep trying to keep it going. And when you get 
kicked off of one show or canceled from one show and now you're pitching another show to another network. I understand. You know, once you're doing it, you want to make sure that you've exhausted every opportunity uh, before it's done. But it's that type of situation that's flooded the market and led to them saying, all right, well, we're not going to do any more of these shows. We're not going to do any more of these programs. Let's cancel the ones that we have. And now we're in the situation that we're in. The ratings are down. That's the only reason shows get canceled, because the ratings aren't there. They didn't cancel any of these programs because they faked evidence which is what I know a lot of people are going to say now. And I know, John, you know this m probably more than I do, but I know Everyday Paranormal and, and you know Ghost Lab, they've been accused of some sketchy evidence. Uh, we know that TAPS has been accused of some sketchy evidence. And we're, I'm not passing judgment one way or another. I'm just saying, and I've, I've reached the point now where I'd almost want paranormal TV shows to fake evidence to keep people interested in the topic of the paranormal. I know we, we can debate about this, but I'm talking about a television show, Matt. I'm not talking about actual investigation. If I found out that Jason and Grant went into somebody's house and pretended like they had something going on when they didn't, I'd be furious. And that would be absolutely unforgivable for me. But if I find out that they were at a location and they played up something that happened, I'm not talking pulling strings and making doors open and close, but I'm saying they heard a noise and they acted like it was something bigger than it really was. Or if, you know, uh, there's a light outside and they react to it as, oh my God, what's that? And then they run outside and find out it's only a headlight going by. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with the creation of the drama for what ends up happening. Uh, but when... When it's all said and done, like that really has no impact on whether or not these programs. So everybody out there that thinks that they got one of these shows canceled because they bitched on the internet about them faking evidence, you're wrong. They got canceled because of ratings. And you can tell me, well, the ratings were down because they got accused of faking evidence. Because they were exposed as frauds, and I'm not saying this, this is what people would say. Because they were exposed as frauds, people stopped watching. That's bull crap, too, because the general audience that's watching the show and creating that evidence, uh, creating that rating, doesn't know the difference between paranormal evidence and paranormal reality and paranormal, you know, fakery. And they don't care. They're not watching the show to have it proven to them. They're watching it to be thrilled by the discovery of it. Uh, do we have an actual soapbox that I can stand on? I was just thinking that. For the remainder of the show? No, I mean, besides the fact that I you know, could use it, especially with John in the studio, it makes me feel even shorter than I normally am. But it's, it's no matter what you think happened, ratings. That's the bottom line. And the ratings were down because the interest is down because it was flooded. The market was flooded. Supply and demand, it works with TV too. You know? Again, I know I always make the wrestling paranormal relationship, but we've talked off the air about why I think that it's a relevant analogy, and it kind of is. When you have too much of something, it becomes diluted, and it becomes a lot of that looking over your shoulder syndrome to try to compete with what the other guy's doing. But when you get into the other situation where everything comes streamlined into one, for example, Vince McMahon buys everybody else out, and now he's the only game in town, well, that hurts the product too. So even though these shows are getting canceled, and you know, let's just say the Jason and Grant fans who are going to say, well, good, they're the original, they're the best, they're the ones that should stay on the air and everybody else should go away, well, that's bad too. To only have one approach to it is a horrible thing because you're not getting enough diversity in the viewpoint and you're not winning over anybody that disagrees with what Jason and Grant do. So you need to have the paranormal state for the different approach. You need to have a ghost lab for a different approach. So, all right, I'm going to step down a little bit here, and uh, I'm going to throw the phone numbers out there for people to call in and share as well. 1-877-996-1420, 508-996-0500, I'm getting so flustered here in my I'm argument that I'm forgetting the phone numbers, and how often do I forget the phone numbers? Uh, also, Spooky Crew at SpookySouthCoast.com as well. And Saucer in the chat room has an interesting point. Uh, does not watch the shows for the evidence because not there to say one way or another if it's real or not. Exactly. You, you know, the people that are watching it are not watching it to get definitive proof. They're watching it to be entertained. Matt, yeah. you're a scientist. Yeah. You need the data. You need... No, no, and let's remember, too, a real scientist 
doesn't just want the result. They want the procedure of how that result was achieved. Correct. So when you want definitive evidence of the paranormal, you want start to finish exactly what happened, and then you want to go there and try and duplicate the same results. That's what science is all about, yes. Does your pursuit of science and pursuit of scientific evidence of the paranormal make watching one of these paranormal reality shows less entertaining? I'm not talking Less mad. entertaining? No. I'm not talking, does it make you mad? Does it make you laugh? Any of that stuff would all fall under the, aspe uh, the auspices of entertainment. It keeps your attention. Oh, some of these shows I find quite entertaining. And yes. they keep your attention, and they keep you on the show. And if you had a Nielsen box, you'd be registering a Nielsen rating for that show, which is what makes all the difference. By the way, Nielsen people, if you're listening, I'm still waiting. <laughs> I watch a crap load of television, and I've been wanting all my life to be a Nielsen family. Nielsen, I just learned how to spell Tanner. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so you're, you, you're entertained by these shows, even if they're not conducting it in the same manner that you would if you were there. Correct. Because there is no standardized methodology of, you know, that's been put forward yet. And if there was, okay. let's just say there was, let's just say that, and this is something I know you've been championing for a long time, Let's just say that you are able to create an SOP for paranormal investigation and you get everybody on board and every group signs a paper that says they're going to follow this and five of those groups who agree to follow it all get a television show. And basically now every group that's on different shows on different networks each conduct investigations in the same manner. What's going to happen with those shows? They're going to look exactly like so then what happens to make it so that you have to differentiate between one or the other? What does it become about at that point? Who has the hottest chick on it? Well, that's a good point, too. <laughs> that's, a good, it, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. It becomes about the people. It becomes about the characters. It doesn't matter anymore that they're investigating the paranormal. It's not about the ghost. It's about the Scooby-Doo, the Shaggy, the Velma, and the Fred. Yeah. It's about who it is. I should start using that more as an example because I can't really offend anybody if I start using... Scooby Doo, but uh -oh. <laughs> I might piss off Scooby Doo. But that's fine, but that's what I'm saying. If it was what everybody wants it to be, if it was what everybody who investigates the paranormal wants it to be, then it's going to be even more ridiculously away from what paranormal investigation should be. Then it's going to be, you know, well, last night, you know, Joe and Kate went out on a date. And now the date didn't go well, and that's spilling over into the investigation. You know, that would drive you even crazier than somebody having a different approach than the way that you do things. Right, because Kate really shouldn't be involved with them in the first place, you know. Exactly. She's still yeah, wrong for him. She should have right. gone with Gary. That's what everybody's rooting for anyway. And it'll <laughs> happen in the season finale. All right, we got a call here, so let's take this, take this call. Good evening. You are on Spooky South Coast. How are you doing? Hey, it's Dave calling back. All right, Dave. I I've, had, uh, I've had my little rant time here, so now <laughs> I'll let you get back to what you were saying. No, nope, actually, just listen to what you were just saying. The one thing I don't think a lot of the people that started producing the shows, even Ghost Hunters, all the way up through the shows that are out now, is that it took a lot of us who are just like armchair researchers, the people who had experiences and had interest in it and started to kind of do our own thing, you know, these shows kind of get us off our duff a little bit and made us go out and start doing this stuff, looking for teams, getting mm -hmm. active. And once you start doing that, you realize, whoa, you'd watch the show, and the show is completely different from what was going on out in the field. You know, you, they are, occasionally you had an experience or something might happen, but it was not the same thing. It didn't happen on a weekly basis. And, you know, really I kind of wish that I had some of the – the girls that Matt was talking about, you know, it's, <laughs> well, it would you have know, made it a lot more interesting. But. but that's something that's in the discussion, too. I mean, it's it's not something that we talk about here because, you know, we're not drama. I, and I'm getting tired of the word drama, too. But you know what I mean? We're, like, we're, yeah. we're people that don't per perpetrate the idea of paranormal drama. Uh, but there is discussion out there. Let's just – we're just talking about this now. We're not right. making – accusations we're not siding with anybody we're just talking about what people are talking about and one of the discussions that's out there is that chris williams of ghost hunters had breast implants you know what so what what difference does that make 
anybody he makes that noobs knew, bigger. That's what I think. It's about it. And I, any anybody she's that a great person. I met her before. She's a really she's nice a person. Oh, she's a sweetheart. And, uh, yeah. But anybody that knows her knows that one of the things that she is pursuing in her life is an acting career. Correct. She she makes no bones about it. And she's it. been in films. You can see her yeah. as an extra in a couple of different movies. And so that's something that might be helping, and I'm not saying that it's right that it might help her career in that regard, but that could help her in that regard. That could be the reason behind why if she did do it, which I haven't seen convincing evidence one way or another. All right. Now, what's, what's wrong if she did do it? I mean, if it makes her feel better and if it makes her feel that, you know, this enhances her chances and abilities to uh, get better uh, roles in other movies, that's fine. But it's in no way negates her abilities as a, a paranormal investigator. I I know Chris Act. very 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 well. She's uh you know there's, hung out with me on look, a number of occasions. There's only two boobs big enough to make a difference in the paranormal field in a negative way, and we're both talking on the radio right now. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we're the two biggest boobs <laughs> that get in the way of anything. But get a, we're, we don't even come in the double D class. <laughs> yeah, no, the, I mean, that, that sort of stuff with the boobs, whatever, that has nothing to do with it. I mean, that's... Uh, Sorry, Chris, for discussing you, it, by the way. Yeah. I mean, you, it's the person that's out there. I mean, if she's having her experiences, whatever, it, it has nothing to do with her boob size. But, you know, I... I, I've investigated with people that I wish had a lot bigger boobs than she does, and they just don't seem to get her or see or observe the same way or do things a certain way. And I, th I think what I was really trying to get, though, was just when you see the TV shows, what happened, they all just kind of went south, and they dragged a lot of people in and made us start investigating. And then as we investigated, you realize you don't get the same amount of evidence that you get every week that you see on TV. So you start criticizing it a lot more. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, it, it really, it's not any kind of a surprise that the shows are going away, that a lot of these shows are just popping up and dropping off. It's... And while we have you on the phone, Dave, you, you, you know a little bit more about the situation than I do. I only, I only looked a little bit during the break and, and what John's been filling me in a little bit from what he knows. But this mutiny thing that we were discussing before, yeah, this idea that Everyday Paranormal, the group that was uh, involved with the Ghost Lab program, is apparently blowing the lid off paranormal television. Is that what's going on here? Uh, I wouldn't say just so much off of the television. It's more blowing the lid off of people that are out there faking evidence or mm -hmm. people that are calling and saying, hey, these guys are faking evidence. They're doing this. We'll prove it. Show it to us. You know, if they are, then we're going to call them out and say, this is what's going on. Be careful of these people. And if it isn't what's going on, they're going to say, well, these people are making this up. Watch out for them. And that's kind of what the mutiny is about, to get, stop all the drama, basically. Yeah, but that's the yeah. problem with that is by doing that, you're it causing starts more. more. And the best... And the critical thinkers start going away. That's what happens is the critical thinkers don't want to speak up because the people that have been on TV have a lot more pull than, exactly. say, me, the average Joe sitting on the couch or whatever. And the, the Ghost Lab fans are going to be, uh, you can almost say the Ghost Lab sycophants, are going to side with them no matter what they say. So when they say they choose to attack us for bringing it up tonight here on the show, then that means their army is going to turn against us as well. And what are we going to do about it? Their audience is bigger than ours, and we're just going to be harassed by them because we spoke out, and we could be right, they could be right, it doesn't matter. They have the numbers. I, I got an email that got sent to me saying that they got overloaded on their show last night with could be upwards of a million people listening last that's night. That's bogus. There's no possible way that that's true. I, I, I just don't well, see it. It wasn't even working. I, had I just don't see it. I think their system <laughs> was down, and that's what they're using as an example. There's, but There's no way. If they were streaming a show, there's no way they could have had a million people listening at any one time. Do you know what the stream would cost to have a million people listening at any one time? We're owned... Spooky South Coast is broadcast on WBSM, which is owned by Citadel Broadcasting, which if I can follow, if nothing's changed since the last time I checked, is owned by ABC Radio. ABC Radio doesn't even give their stations the ability to broadcast to millions of people at one time over stream. Correct. I can only think of one out outlet that might have that capability, and that's Coast to Coast, and I'm sure they're doing that with relays yep. instead of just broadcasting right out there. And I'm not, I'm not saying yep. that they didn't have a million people trying to access it, yeah. but I'm just saying they weren't hitting a million ears with what they were saying last yeah. night. But the, the problem here is 
like like we said before, they're causing more problems by trying to expose these problems. And they've got to know that. They've got to know that they're just, you know, pushing buttons for the purpose oh. of keeping themselves in the conversation. It, it's funny because I saw a, a few posts again on Facebook and it was almost like there were certain people trying to call call out and say, you know, they spent the night trying to listen, see if something was going to get dropped about certain groups in New England here. And when it didn't, they were all mad and started posting this morning on Facebook that they needed to eat, that the guys from Ghost Lab needed to eat humble pie and they did this. All they did was promote themselves and clear up their own stuff. Well, I don't think they're actually about bringing down per se each individual group. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the way it was told to me personally through emails from Brad himself, it was more to make people aware of what's going on. It wasn't so much to diminish them and and just put them out there so nobody will ever work with them or talk to them again. It wasn't so much that. It was it was more the other way of just to straighten things out. But who knows how this will work out. Now, again, I'm just inferring from what I read quickly during the news break. Yeah. But are they trying to suggest that they used their television show as a way to kind of expose the paranormal community? Are they trying to say that, hey, we did that to teach you guys a lesson? The email that I saw also, or the blog post, I should say, not email, the blog post I saw, that's that's the way I'm taking it because that, that's what it says. <laughs> and, and, and Dave, did you kind of get that from what you've you know, put into the situation here? Are they trying to say, hey, you know, Ghost Lab was just our way of, of uh, I'm trying to think of a way to, to kind of. He flip-flopped. It, it was fun, and then he didn't like the attacks. He didn't like the way that he was judged, but it was fun, and he didn't like being away from home, but it was fun. It was kind of all over the place. It was. Did you get to listen to the show, almost, Dave? Yeah, I get to. Li I listened to about forty-five minutes before I shut it off. It, it gets to the point where I couldn't listen to it anymore. Um, it was actually like sour grapes, kind of a show almost. Uh, you know, like like I was saying, I, I think once they started realizing that people actually do this stuff, and they're going to criticize them. You know, at least if they're going to criticize, you sit back and take the criticism, and maybe in a couple shows rebroadcast it and say, hey, somebody found this, and we're going to get rid of this, you know, and maybe that would make it a little more interesting and kind of draw the people that actually do this into the shows more. So that, that's, I think that's the biggest thing that's happened since Ghost Hunters came out is people are starting to investigate more. They're starting to get out more. They're starting to do this more. And, you know, if there was a little bit of criticism, then work with it and try to work it into the show maybe instead of, jumping all over it and bashing it it's that, that was that was kind of the feel i got from his i want to say rant last night it was you know i'm getting the feeling this is kind of like one of those situations where uh you know millie vanilli well and i don't mean to make him you know a millie vanilli reference here <laughs> and date myself but <laughs> millie vanilli gets accused I'm that old too tim don't worry about it <laughs> they get accused of lip syncing uh, and, and they get discovered as lip syncing and, you know, you see, uh, I don't even know the guy's name, the one that, the one that ended up passing away, but you see him on the behind the music story of it. And, you know, he's basically saying, well, you know, we were trying to expose the music industry for what it was. Okay. So you're going out there and putting on a fake performance and you got bagged for doing that. And so now you're saying, well, I was just trying to show you guys what it was. You know, it's like when you're told not to, you know, do something and you say, well, I just did it so that you'd learn a lesson. No, you did it and you got caught. Own up to it. And I'm not saying that Ghost Lab did anything wrong and they got caught, but don't say that you did this show so that you can expose the idea of people putting everything on the line to get a TV show. You got yours. You did what you did. Now live with the consequences. It doesn't work both ways. We, we can't we can't actually go out into the paranormal field ourselves, Spooky South Coast, even though we do it. But we can't go out there and, and start blasting people left and right to other people one-on-one. -on -one, and then when they come on the air, kiss their ass. Mm. Because that's, it's not genuine and it's not, you know, we have to do what we did and we have to live with those consequences. I, I just, I can't understand why you would want to try to turn things around and not stand by what you did. You lose credibility by not standing by what you did. 
Absolutely. I, I think there's just there's so many people that are caught up with the trying to be famous, trying to get their own TV show right now, mm -hmm. thinking that they're going to be the next biggest thing. My co-founder says it all the time, the best. That ship has far sailed. Yep. It, nobody's going to get the million dollars per season like Jay and Grant got or whatever it is, but yep. rumors of that. Nobody's going to get a new TV show. Nobody's going to get their equipment paid for free from a TV show. Just go out and have fun with it. You know, don't try and live it 24-7. And that's what some of these people are trying to do. And they and that's what they're doing is cutting other people down, trying they, to get and that. And they don't realize that that brass ring, you know, Jason and Grant already grabbed it. You know, Ryan yeah. Buell got whatever they left behind. Yep. And the rest, it's gone for everybody else. Yep. I mean, I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll drop one name on people. Ask Kristen Gartland about being on these shows about yeah. what it was like and she's going to tell you the travel involved the long days involved the filming involved all this stuff involved to get what nothing yeah. you know i mean you get paid you know a por basically a portion of what you would have got from your regular job if you hadn't had to put your life on hold to go film this tv show or what cost some people in their health i'll give you another good example donna Lacroix. Mm -hmm. she let you know her health ex you know get dangerously close to Becoming a ghost. And uh, she had to step away from that. I mean, I mean, we know people who are on these shows. I'm not going to throw any names out there, but we know examples of people who have been on these shows. And while their episode is even maybe on the air, they're calling you up and saying, hey, can I borrow 20 bucks until next week when I get my paycheck? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just how it is. It's not some glamorous life. And I filmed, what, three or four of He's these TV kidding. shows in my time involved with this. And I can tell you what, I would never do this every week. I would never go and go through the stuff that they go through every week to make, you know, all right. I mean, I, I make a limited amount of money uh, in my 45 day jobs that I work. And would it be nice to have one job where I can make that same amount of money? Sure. But am I going to go through what they go through for that? No, especially if you've got a family, especially if you've got other interests outside of the paranormal, forget it. You wouldn't be able to, to pursue any of that stuff because you've got to be at, you know, four different places in three weeks to get this done so that they have the time to edit it and put everything together before the next season starts. I mean, the only way I would ever do it is if it was live. And I get I just a little funny had to go show up and actually, do it. Tim. What's that? Look, um, the travel channel, the way you were talking about it, yeah, when they're doing the filming, they have you come in and they interview you and they do all this stuff and they have you talk and sit down for like two hours and say, okay, we're all set for a while. And um, I get to a point where I was recording with one of them, and we stopped, and they said, we're all set. And the owner of the place said, hey, let's have some beer and some food and whatever, and we all kicked back and relaxed. I ended up having to film like three more segments after having about six of these beers that were bigger than my head. And <laughs> they, they put it on TV. Thank God I could actually speak. I watched it. I was sweating bullets tonight. This thing was on television. But I did, that's the other thing, too, is I didn't realize that, the people running the cameras are just, they have no, you know, time frame whatsoever. It's, it's, and, and we, it's crazy. I think I've told the story before on the air. When, when Matt Moniz and I went to film, um, oh, what was it? We've uh, done several of them. Pick one. <laughs> uh, I, uh, Monster Quest. Okay. We went to film Monster Quest at Lizzie Borden's. We were there for like. That's on my Xbox, by the way. I do have that saved. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> we, we we spent like seven hours there. Yeah, and uh, to essentially have like thirty seconds of screen time. So I mean that's just how it works for a couple of schmucks going in there to share personal experiences. What must it be like for the people who are the regular cast members who have to be in every scene? Uh, yep. and, and you know, for every story that we've heard about Jason and Grant going into a place to investigate for the show and blowing through there in a matter of a couple of hours, I've heard an equal number of stories for them being at a location three or four days to have it edited down to what seems like a couple hours worth of work. So I mean, it's not... Give you one good example. Waverly Hills. Mm -hmm. you know, that was... Were they a... five days they were there yeah. filming? And and it looks like it's boiled down to one night's worth of work. I mean, it's not something I Whereas would want to do. On the other hand, uh, if you want to talk about their Lizzie Borden case, they, were, they filmed that entire show in under, I believe it was said to me, four hours. And it kind of reflects in what they got right. out of that episode. Right. Well, that's it's the same thing that I was just going to say to you. You guys went to the Ghost Lab shooting of mm -hmm. uh, Lizzie Borden. They were there for three days. They shot for 12 hours per day. 
to get that to get 21 minutes of film. They filmed Tim and I for what? A couple, couple hours. Yeah, you guys were there a couple. I was there. I and then we guys. never even made it yeah. into the show. And you guys were there probably. We for might be two, on the DVD. Hours. We might be one of the uh, extended <laughs> yeah. scenes or the the bonus content. But uh, I mean, and... that's a good point though. Um, when you get to that 21 hours of filming, a lot of that isn't even investigation at that point though. It's no, it's walking in and out of doors. Television. Yeah. 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 I, I literally sat there one yeah. night and watched them for the 12 hours, and it was literally just walking in and out, doing rehearsal on this type of thing, walking in and out of the trailer. They did a little rehearsal of that. It's a lot of dumb stuff like that. We, it's not we, even full investigating. And I, 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 I'm not exaggerating on this. We spent 45 minutes yeah. walking in and out of the back door of Lizzie Borden's for Monster Quest, and on, what, like the 14th or 15th take, we decided we'd be funny. And they had a couple of the dresses that they used for the recreations. And we decided we'd put those on and walk out like that. And uh, didn't go over well. It was not, like, not even a smile was cracked by anybody. And it's like, dude, you just made me walk in and out of this door like 17 times. I want to have a little bit of fun. So imagine what it must be like to be these groups that are out there doing this all the time and having to deal with this. And these people that are filming the shows, they don't give two craps about whether or not there's a ghost in the place. They just want to do their job and go home. So you're sitting there saying, well, we didn't get anything. Let's film for a few more hours and see if anything pops up. You're not going to get that. You're going to be at the mercy of the production crew. If you want that to be your life, more power to you. But it's not going to happen if you want a network TV, not in 2011. Uh, that, too bad that didn't make it into the show. You and I uh, up in the dress. <laughs> that might also be uh, bonus material at some point. But, uh, oh, Moniz, it's not the first video that would hint the internet if you want a dress. I'm sorry to say. Oh. Well, anyways, Tim, I think uh, your prediction, if we can get some shows that can just kind of hit us with a one-shot deal mm -hmm. and put a whole bunch of content, a lot of work, a lot of effort all into one thing, you know, that might grab a lot more viewers. And, hey, if it's one of those things that's only a couple of times a year. And then you have the opportunity to have different, unique approaches. You have yeah, the idea and to follow ups too. Yeah, and you yeah. can yeah, and you can take it in kind of a skewed view too. You know, you can have uh, there's so many people that we know in this field that wouldn't fit the formula of what's going on in current paranormal television. I mean, I would include you in that, Dave, as somebody who has an approach uh, that you know might not work with one of these other groups because you like to think outside the box. It's Matt subtle Moniz, too. It's it's a subtle thing. It's you can't get the same results every time. I think what it is is we all have the face for radio. Well, that too. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody has a different approach to it, and it's not going to fit in the box of what they want to film. And everything doesn't really train. I mean, I, I tend to think that my investigation style would suit very well for television because I'm yelling and I'm, you know, knocking stuff around and demanding things. But that's not Matt Moniz's approach. You know, he takes a very more projected boring <laughs> scientific and, yeah so i mean it's it and you know would it be an interesting show to have those two styles contrasting hey who knows at this point everything's kind of fallen into a format that people are familiar with so now if you do something a certain way you're copying one show if you do it a different way you're copying another show or even worse you're intentionally trying to not copy so you can't even be original because they're going to accuse you of trying to not be like so no there you go I, th I think it's going to come down to doing what you do and other people having webcast shows. Sure, uh, and I, it's I, out there. I, I mean, think that's what it's going to be is a lot of these shows that are canceling, you're going to see some of them jumping on a program like yours, wanting to do a weekly show live or maybe do um, even a monthly show live and then other networks like that too. And if you do it online, what do you then become popular on? Right. Your own merit. It's based on what you're putting out there. And I can tell you there's other people that do the same thing we do with the camera here in the studio, and they play to the camera, and it doesn't work. You know, our approach has been, hey, it's there. We, we acknowledge that it's there, but we continue doing what it is that we do. And I think that if a lot of groups can do that, a lot of groups that want to have some sort of televised version of their product, do the same thing. You know, let the camera be there and let it catch what you're doing, but don't play to it because playing to it, Makes you just as bad as what you're trying to rail against. All right, soapbox off now, Dave. We're going to let you go because we do uh, we do want to take a break. Uh, but thank you for joining in and, and sharing in the discussion with us. And as somebody well, who I know is you. you're there every week, it's good when you call in. Feel free to do it more often. Happy New Year, guys. Take care. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year to you as well. 
All right. So there you go. That's uh, that's my little rant. I, I was going to make a whole bunch of predictions for the paranormal in 2011, but I mean that's number one. That's the number one on the future forecast for the paranormal is the demise, basically, of paranormal television. Uh, now, with that happening, like you said, they're going to see more of these other outlets, and I hope that radio continues to be one of them. We're still going to be here. We're not going anywhere. Well, we're not going to be here for the next two weeks thanks to the NFL football playoffs, but we'll be back after that with a whole slate of great shows that our content director, Chris Balzano, has worked hard to put together for us. And we have uh, new articles coming up on SpookySouthCoast.com as well. We're going to take a break, and then when we come back on the other side, hopefully we're going to connect with one of the newest writers for SpookySouthCoast.com, and we're going to find out what she has planned. And uh, also, I know Chris is working on a few things that will be posted up there on the website tonight. If they're not already, I haven't checked. So SpookySouthCoast.com, we're definitely going to be updating that a lot more often in 2011 with more articles. In fact, and I know this is going to drive Chris crazy, but if anybody out there wants to write an article or has something that they want to contribute to SpookySouthCoast.com, we'd be glad to look it over and maybe use it on the site. Just email uh, SpookyCrew at SpookySouthCoast.com. Or if you want to hit me directly, Tim at SpookySouthCoast.com or Chris is Chris at SpookySouthCoast.com. Uh, Balzano at SpookySouthCoast.com. Sorry. We'll be right back with more here on SpookySouthCoast.com. <laughs> I will amuse myself with terror. From what grave did I come? From what evil mixture was I compounded? I have time. All well, the time I need to plan it. It's local high school basketball action this Tuesday night on WBSM. This is Jack Peterson inviting you to join Mike Green and me from the Montague Gym at Wareham High School as the Division Three champion Vikings host the Aponiquid Lakers. Both teams enter the game as the top-seeded teams in the South Coast Conference. It's Aponiquid and Wareham Tuesday night at 620 on WBSM.com and AM 1420 WBSM. What if your brother or your husband, what if your son came back from the service with a spinal cord injury? When they volunteer to serve, we expect our country to be there for them if they are injured. For more than 60 years, Paralyzed Veterans of America has been fighting to ensure that we receive all of the benefits that we've earned. Thank you, Paralyzed Veterans, for helping my husband. My son. For helping my brother. You too can help. Visit pva.org, a public service of Paralyzed Veterans of America. All right, welcome back to Spooky South Coast. Uh, we are coming up on the end of the program here, the first one of 2011, the beginning of year six for us, right? Six? Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, but again, next week we're not going to be on. The week after that we're not going to be on. But there may be some things that pop up on Spooky TV during that time. So pay attention to SpookySouthCoast.com. And of course, you can always sign up for the newsletter, which we will send out uh, should anything change. But there may be some – there's an opportunity here for us to have some fun. It might be time for another off the air. Mm. Only this time we'll with do video. The, okay, let's do it in my place. I'll do a barbecue in my place. There we go. Can can we actually shoot off the, the guns, too, at the same time? Sure. Camera? Excellent. We're going to get this on camera, that's for sure. All right, So, uh, but joining us now on the line, we have the newest contributor to SpookySouthCoast.com. Uh, she runs a website called ParanormalUtopia.com, which will be linked up with all of her articles. Her name is Nikki Wall, and she joins us on the phone. Good evening, Nikki. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? Oh, we are spooktacular. Yeah, I was listening to you a little bit before. It's funny. I was going to ask you if I could borrow 20 bucks till my next paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's, you know, then our other writers who contribute things are going to be like, if she's getting paid, why aren't I getting paid? Gonna, and then, you know, Balzano's going to expect a salary, and we can't everything, afford can't Everything afford paranormal is definitely a passion project. I'm learning that really fast. <laughs> there you go. Well, you, you have kind of an interesting, uh, uh, an interesting background in how you got involved with the paranormal. Um, yeah, I was actually raised Jehovah's Witness, and it was kind of a um, rebellious thing at first. And then I just I, I got totally into it and fell in love with it, became a 100% a believer. And um, it's just odd. My website seemed like the universe was directing me there because I had tried, you know, um, psychic websites and all sorts of things, and I pulled this together, and all of a sudden I've gotten more hits on this website than I have any other website I've ever owned 
all of them combined. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun fun venture, and um, you know, I'm trying to build it up with lots of resources, so it's not just article based, but um, as you guys know, a link to different paranormal podcasts. And then, of course, like where to report a UFO and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I've got to say I'm having fun with it. And I'm glad you guys had me on to talk about it a little bit. Well, and we'll definitely have you back on in the future when we have more time. It's just things started rolling so good with the discussion on tonight's show that we, we weren't going to stop that train while it was chugging along. No, I, I wouldn't expect you to at all. <laughs> now, uh, what are some of the uh, some of the ideas that you have planned for some of the articles? Are you going to be taking some of the articles you've written for Paranormal Utopia and kind of updating them, or have you got some new approaches that you think will fit uh, with with the idea of uh, Paranormal Radio here? I really, really um, just want to keep continuing to put new um, material up constantly. I feel like there's just not enough. You know, I I try to cover everything from cryptozoology to parapsychology, you know, UFOs, everything. So there's constantly something going on. Um, There's always new movies coming out or, you know, some crazy UFO sighting. So Mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident that um, for the most part I can always keep, you know, fresh content on there. I'm so sorry. And helicopters going over my head. Is it it black? uh, Yeah, it's it's the same same question. Yeah. So, um, you know, and then in between then I find plenty of time to, you know, do these like investigative articles, I guess you could say, just, you know, really delving into something or another. Like I've been uh, working on an article about the ritual Romani, which is uh, the oldest um, ritual that they would use to do exorcisms and how that came about. So I'm working on that right now. And so, yeah, I mean, there's always just going to be fresh content coming up. All right. Well, that sounds great. We're looking forward to it. Do you know when your first article is going to be up uh, on SpookySouthCoast.com? You know what? Um, I'm not sure yet. All right. Well, we're putting the <laughs> probably, pressure on you. Probably tonight um, or tomorrow, the very next time I you know, get into the, the writing mood and uh, start throwing things up on there. Excellent. Well, we thank you very much for your contributions. And again, your site is ParanormalUtopia.com, and we'll have that linked up to every one of your stories on SpookySouthCoast.com. And we're going to have you back for a whole show sometime to talk about everything. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. Thank you so much, and uh, Happy New Year to you. You too. All right. Have a good night. Bye-bye. That is Nikki Wall, the newest contributor to SpookySouthCoast.com, and you can always check out SpookySouthCoast.com for interesting stuff, and uh, we we do plan on having more stuff in 2011. I'm hoping to get more writing up there as well. Uh, And for now, you know, just go up there. Chris is making some updates during the course of the night. I know Matt Costa said he's going to eventually get the archives updated. We've got them up on iTunes. We just got to get them up on the page. Uh, Are you still distracted by your new venture? Should we plug your new venture? Um, Or is it not ready yet? Not ready yet. Okay. All right. Well, this is this is a good one, folks. You're gonna love this. It's got nothing to do with the paranormal, but it's awesome nonetheless. It could be there and all. We can we can we'll make we'll definitely make uh, a, a correlation to it somewhere along the lines. So uh, again, one last time, we're gonna be off for the next two weeks because of the NFL playoffs. But stay tuned to SpookySouthCoast.com because I, I'm sensing a really good off the air spooky TV coming up soon. Uh, I think you're gonna love it. I, I know I'm excited for it now because. We can cause a lot of mayhem at Moniz's house. <laughs> By the time the cops get there, we could already be across the water. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back after the first two weeks of the NFL playoffs. Uh, so, you know, the, we'll, we'll have plenty of great shows planned for you coming up in 2000. First, with local news. All right, well, and we're out. For Matt Moniz, for Matt Costa, for John Brightman, for Chris Balzano, I'm Tim Weisberg. We want you all to stay spectacular. First, with local news, talk, and sports, this is WBSM New Bedford, Citadel Broadcasting, AM 1420, WBSM. The new year started off to a tragic start in some Midwestern and Southern states as tornadoes ripped through the region. Seven people are dead and hundreds are without shelter. 13-year-old Mackenzie McMunn outside St. Louis. I mean, everybody's house is pretty torn up. Hundreds of homes are either damaged or destroyed in Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi. I just dropped to the floor because I didn't know what else to do. So I figured if I'm in the basement, I'm okay. Ditto says Scott Schmidt, Sunset Hills, Missouri. Hi, five seconds after I got to the basement, snapping, cracking, roof started coming off. Hundreds are homeless, says Missouri. 
Missouri Governor Jay Nixon. Dozens and dozens of people that are either staying at hotels or with friends. And as the folks come back to Fort Leonard Wood, they're going to have to be housed in other places, too. Federal disaster helps being sought. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News. Federal officials blame it on pilot error when the man at the controls of a Piedmont flight turned his radio to the wrong frequency, causing the plane to lose radio contact, prompting the evacuation of the U.S. Capitol on Saturday. ABC's Taman Bradley. There are typically not that many people actually working in the U.S. Capitol on a day like today, a Saturday and a holiday. But the people who were in the buildings were evacuated just as a precaution. The president and vice president are away on vacation. The plane was headed from South Carolina to Washington. A Redmond, Washington mother could only watch in horror as her four young children and a man were killed by an intense apartment fire early on Saturday. Fire officials say all four children were 10 or younger. When Congress reconvenes next week, there won't be any Kennedys in Washington for the first time since 1940.